<laughs> so the Nintendo Switch. Yes. It has been announced. It has had its press conference. What did you guys think? First impressions. Um, I'm super excited. I really love how Nintendo always takes an angle of multiplayer. Mm, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm so glad that they kept motion stuff. I was really hoping they'd do something Metroid, <laughs> yeah. but I knew they wouldn't. Um, I'm really surprised with uh, how much con or uh, how much stuff they crammed into the little Joy Cons. Like, no, like, yeah. yeah, that's super rumble, surprising. Yeah, and the motion controls, and it's not even just like <laughs> the standard Wii motion controls, like super advanced. Motion those controls, things which... are eighty dollars for a pair of those. <clears throat> yeah, so they're definitely packing in like yeah. some sort of new tech or something. Yeah, no, but it. see, I I was really happy that they did that because. I feel like motion controls were one of the... Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, waggle, waggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, playing a first-person shooter on the Wii, as rare as that was, it was, like, a great no, feeling. No, dude, like, like, if you've used the Vive, you guys use the Vive, right? Yeah. yeah. Those controllers, like, that proves right there that motion controllers can be yeah. amazing. Yeah. No, that's like, like, it they just actually needs to compare those joy to the Vive. Yeah, that's what I, I yeah. saw some developers... That's the other thing, is, like, a lot of people saying, like, oh, they shouldn't have gone, like, done that. It's, it, like, too too much money or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah but like that's what the future of gaming is it's vr oh yeah like, yeah yeah you need to have Dude, motion controls like. those like little like the cut and snip game <clears throat> yeah that looked amazing crap, yeah, yeah, yeah. so brilliant or well actually before we get into that we should talk about the one two switch with the milking <laughs> <laughs> no you know what's cool is that they have the um the hidden shoulder buttons so you can hold yeah. the controller like in all sorts oh, of different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was actually really cool because <clears throat> instead of holding like a typical with like using the trigger, you get to use like double the double. L. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. was a surprise. But that was not a surprise. But that was one of the revelations from the press conference is that there's actually two buttons hidden in the like the yeah, rail yeah. where mm -hmm. the controller mm -hmm. actually slides into the thing. They actually leaked a lot of that stuff. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't read any of the leaks. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Andrew was like voracious for information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that there was a dude who leaked everything the night before on 4chan? Really? Yeah, he was like, I'm doing the setup for like the German event. And he literally, like from top to bottom, he called everything. Like Super oh. Bomberman R, wow. Ultra Street Fighter 2, all this stuff. But nobody knew it was real because he was just like some random dude on 4chan. Yeah. Um, but overall, from like the entire conferences, like... From the perspective of the entire conference, did you guys think there was like enough revelations, or because I got an opinion on it, but I, I feel like it was just enough. Mm. Like, I mean, I overall I came away from the conference feeling really happy, like thinking it was really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I feel like uh, like we all knew about Mario, Zelda, everyone knows about. Yeah, the motion stuff is great, but I don't think a lot of people are like crazy about it. I think if they like focus more on some big hitting games that would have helped i'm really curious like what the general public thinks of the motion controls <clears throat> because like i know like we just go to like hardcore game sites and stuff so yeah. i know what they think they're, they're always gonna be once like, they try it they'll know what they'll think it's gonna be hard to for nintendo get to get another like uh wii fad kind of thing going so i don't think it, it'll ever catch on like that yeah but i think the biggest thing for the motion controls and all that stuff that's in the joy cons is the fact that it retains the options yeah for those things yeah, yeah and like backwards compatibility is not, yeah, yeah you know not necessarily backwards compatibility but just being able to play previous games th the same way you would on a wii or a wii u one thing i'm wondering is the ir sensor on the right joy con is yeah. that does that work as a pointer too or what i don't know i don't think so yeah is it only on one joy con <coughs> yeah i think oh, so okay. Because I don't think it's, uh, you'd need like a sensor bar or something for that, right? I mean, I guess they could use like the uh, the motion controls for pointing, essentially. Because no, they're think, so precise uh, that you probably could do that. But the, From the demonstration or the little information thing they had during the presentation, they showed the controller and it was projecting something. It was like, oh, we can sense the right. distance. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. probably <clears throat> coming from the joystick. I'm just thinking if they could use, if they could make an FPS where you can play it with motion controls mm. or something. Well, yeah, but it's weird though because the pointer's on the bottom of the controller. Yeah, so yeah. So like, yeah. if you were holding it like this, you'd have to go like that. To Which I wonder why they did that. Yeah, like, I know that seems really weird. Maybe because there's buttons on top, so they wouldn't be able to find a place for the sensor. Oh yeah. Maybe yeah. Maybe the IR sensor is kind of like a secondary thing. I don't yeah. know, like the heartbeat sensor. <laughs> yeah, but so basically, <laughs> vitality for sensor. me, the conference like the beginning was very exciting especially with like the hype building up like mm -hmm. they did a good a really good job of building the hype like when they did that 60 second countdown yeah, yeah. timer yeah. i was like flipping out which man. is <laughs> it's great to see nintendo doing that again like, yeah yeah but then the beginning was really great and then it just kind of got into like especially when they brought out the ea guy 
You always have to bring out the EA guy and he tells you about FIFA. And that dude was the most joyless. <laughs> like, I, said, I said he looked like the antagonist in a Chinese kung fu movie where it's like Asians versus like the Europeans. And you said he looked like the main bad guy from a Rocky movie. Yeah, he looked like... Uh, he had no emotion. He just stood there with no smile. I mean, working at EA, I bet we'll do that too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I thought they closed out extremely strong with the Breath oh, of the yeah. Wild trailer. Oh my God. My the- God, dude. It's like I got goosebumps every time I watch a trailer. Yeah, yeah, so the the way they had it introduced, like they kept building it up and up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but also just like that was the best trailer I've ever seen. That's the most it amazing really thing good. I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. 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 Completely, yeah. <laughs> any any concerns I had about what the game would be missing, like a full story or, you know, like real sense of adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That trailer just you know that was actually one of my worries too for breath of the wild is that there wasn't going to be enough story yeah but like no after seeing that trailer you're like oh yeah and the voice acting sounded great too. oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah it was great too. I have like no worries about this it game was so anymore. much like a studio ghibli movie like yeah. which is, is the yeah. best thing to take an uh, mm-hmm. take an influence yeah from. no i'm to totally ripped them off i, <laughs> I endorse that completely <laughs> <laughs> and like they had um giant like colossus looking thing oh yeah which, i mean yeah. shadow of the colossus is yeah yeah awesome. the game looked it looked epic it looked deep it looked like um like the story looked like it was going to be really interesting with not just like oh the hero comes and he saves the day it like there was moments of desperation yeah no like, that that's really cool that's like really you don't usually see that that often mm-hmm. yeah, from yeah. zelda games yeah. like it's always like more of the heroes it's like everything's team. like like there's an evil coming and then he fights it off yeah but yeah. in this one it's like it's the, already yeah it yeah. happens like <laughs> yeah. everything gets destroyed and now you're just like at the breaking point or your, your back is against the wall yeah you know the meme just like in real life when people say oh this is the worst timeline mm-hmm. what are they referring to specifically oh. or is it just there's so many different movies it's community and... the tv show oh there's an episode where they're playing a, a well they they're deciding who's going to go to the door to get the pizza so they roll the dice and one of the characters is like you know you're creating different timelines now when you do that oh. and so they go through each one and one of them is called the darkest timeline because everything's just like terrible oh, so people okay. always say oh this is the darkest see, timeline see because i thought huh. it was like from zero escape or like uh, <laughs> one of the zeldas or something but <laughs> <laughs> wait have you not heard that no i've okay. never heard that <laughs> <laughs> i guess it's more of a twitter thing uh god what was i going to say um, i don't remember oh here's a question about darkest timelines no, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Something about the Zelda timeline. No, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a question. Do you think that they will implement motion controls in any of the hardcore games? Or is that more just for like the Wii Sports casual type stuff? I think it's just going to be developer's choice at this point. Well, yeah. see, the thing is, is that... Oh, no, never mind. That makes no sense. I was going to say is that if it's docked... No, it doesn't make a difference, right? Because you can use the controllers whether it's docked or on the TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure lots of people are going to take advantage of it. Because I just keep thinking, like, there's... I mean, even if... I don't know. There's just so much opportunity to use motion in a hardcore game. And I feel like, except for on the Wii, it's been kind of, like, underutilized or kind of gimmicky. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, because they put what should have been a button <clears throat> press onto a waggle. Right, That's exactly. what people's yeah, yeah, main yeah. problem yeah. with motion controls are, like Twilight Princess. Like, instead of just pressing the button, you do this. Mm-hmm. Although I did like that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was, like, better in Skyward Sword because it's actually directional. Yeah, one-to-one. But even then, it's it wasn't, like, precise enough. If but it was the, precise as a vibe, man, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Well, bef- we won't get into that whole Twilight Princess stuff, but um, I think... I think one of the big problems is that people refuse to move forward with control. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, it, well, especially from the hardcore community, mm-hmm. what people want is just for Nintendo to make a PlayStation 4 yeah. and then put Nintendo games on right, there. Yeah. And it's like, yes, I understand that's what you want, but that's also how you're going to get the same thing that you've gotten yeah, a yeah. million times. You're going to get Uncharted 55. Well, know? and that's the brilliant thing about this is it can be that, too. Like, yeah, no, that's it true. It can be whatever, sure. yeah. So when the Switch was first announced, like <clears throat> the thing that excited me the most was the local multiplayer. Like where you just yeah. take it and then you give somebody else a controller and you start playing. Yeah. And like the fact that they brought Street Fighter 2 back for the Switch, yeah. like that's just like, th- that's like, they're going <laughs> to take us like straight back to the Super Nintendo days in you guys' basement. You were barely oh, old enough. Yeah. But like <laughs> we play and like I, we have this one cousin and I beat his <laughs> over and over. Um, he was always guile. Do you remember that? 
Yeah. yeah. He was always Guile and I was always Chun Li. He'd rematch me. I'd just keep beating him and beating him. And beating him. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's exactly the thing I think of whenever I see the old school Street Fighter oh, II yeah, graphics. Yeah. I'm just thinking of those days back at their house. We wake up, play some Street Fighter II. <laughs> oh my God. SimCity. <laughs> oh, dude. Super Nintendo, my favorite system. We play that in your basement all the time. But that brings my second point, which is that they're going to bring virtual console games like the Super Nintendo games and they're going to add online play. Did you guys hear about that? Mm-hmm. I heard about that, yeah. So the possibilities are that they could have Secret of Mana online. online. Do you understand, like, yeah. like the, the course that our this is our life has been leading. <laughs> 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 like when we were a kid, we play split screen, or it's not even split screen; it's just one screen. We play Super Nintendo. We had the multi tap three player. Yeah. Now we could have three switches all play. I mean, it'd be the same thing. It'd still be great. (laughs) The other thing I'm excited about is wireless LAN. Because, like, when you think of a handheld, it's, like, a given that you can connect wirelessly. But since it's also a home console, it's, like... I I remember back when they announced the Wii. I I could have sworn they said it had wireless LAN. Yeah, yeah. But no one ever did that. Yeah. But, like, that's so... Like, that's such a huge deal if you've got a good multiplayer game on there. It's just the whole having to bring... Having to... The need to bring the console. Yeah bring the cables no really one does land like, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but you have just, to have more than one tv yeah exactly yeah. but being able to just bring the switch and maybe like a charging cable for that yeah it, it simplifies things so much that yeah. no that's it's huge, gonna make dude. like yeah the wireless that's super cable. huge yeah, it's gonna be great. i think that's one thing that people kind of underestimate when it comes to like just electronics is that usability is super important that's mm-hmm. why like mm-hmm. the tablets have taken off so much is because the interface is so simple you can just hand it to a kid and they start playing yeah and this is kind of the same way you can just bring your switch set it down and you can start playing that milk the cow game or whatever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with whoever it's like it's so many different devices on one like, yeah it's a tablet with a touch screen. It's a Wii. It's a normal console. It's amazing. Like, yeah. <laughs> so after the conference, we all stayed up and we were just like watching the trailer over and over again. <laughs> and then the pre-order started to come out. <laughs> so we all managed to get, where did you end up pre-ordering? That's fine. The system? Okay. Yeah. yeah. The system. I got the neon one. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Where did you guys might... each get one? No, I got a gray one. He got, yeah. And the neon oh. one, we might switch one controller each. So he's getting oh, one of yeah, the color yeah, ones. That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I would have gotten one of the neon ones, but I didn't realize that. Yeah, apparently they're going to be the rarer ones, is what people are thinking. Oh, which possibly. well, you can buy those separately, the controllers. Separately. Yeah, that's true. That that begs the which question kind of though, like, why would you s- spend seventy bucks on a colored controller, especially when the console console comes with two eighty controllers and that's eighty. Yeah. yeah, and that's all you need. You know, it's like. Well, that's the other thing is like the the pro controller is seventy, and I feel like a lot of people wanted to use that. But now they probably uh, seventy is a lot, man. Yeah. Well, it's because yeah. it got like it has the gyro on it. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's got okay. all yeah, the yeah. features of the Joy Cons. Probably oh, it probably has the HD yeah. Rumble too, which is also a really cool thing. Oh, but, yeah. yeah, that sounds cool. But my I, whole thing. No, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say the my whole thing is like the like I feel like the Joy Con grip is more than enough. Like I'm gonna be completely satisfied. Yeah, it looks like a pro controller. I don't know why anyone. Is, yeah. yeah. One thing I well, actually I have to fill in the hand. really liked um, that I didn't think I would be so like surprised about was the little attachment you can slide on the yeah the wrist strap that makes it look more like oh a SNES yeah, controller. yeah 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 uh, because that's was, really was smart really, too yeah, yeah, yeah. i was really worried the joy con was going to be kind of small and it was going to be kind of yeah. annoying to hit those buttons but yeah. then they slipped that on and i was like oh man it's just like an SNES. it controller. looks really yeah. slick too yeah yeah i will tell you this when i was in japan and mike after you guys left michael bought a famicom mini then mm. those controllers are super small i don't know <laughs> if they're smaller than the joy cons even but after like 10 minutes, you forget how small the controller is and you're just playing with it. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's going to be the same thing for this. I think the only controller I've really ever had a big issue with was like the original Xbox controller. Yeah, those are so Like big. everything else, I feel like you'll get used yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, wow. even on a PS4 controller, which I think is really comfortable, like I get tired after a while. Um, what do you guys think about the price? It's mm, fair. It's about what I expected, especially after <clears throat> hearing about all the additional things in the Joy-Con. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I think a lot of people... Well, I don't know what people thought because of the leaks, because you've read the leaks, there, Some didn't. were saying 300 some were saying 250 Well, I mean, did they leak all that stuff in the Joy-Con? Like, I oh, know yeah, they the talked patents. about the IR, yeah, yeah. But the HD Rumble. And the HD Rumble, yeah, I don't HD think Rumble, it was. Yeah, that wasn't. At all, yeah. yeah. Well, the and fact that the it had, like, the enhanced motion sensing and the HD Rumble. Yeah. And um, 
I think that kind of <clears throat> probably bumped up the price, but I'm okay with it. Well, see, I I feel like 300 is kind of a, like obviously I'd love it to be lower, but I almost feel like that's kind of fair with how much tech is in there. Everybody always always is like, "Oh, 250 price point and I'll buy it." Everyone always says 250 price point and it's never that price point. So, I don't know why people keep getting their hopes well, up. Well, I mean, I mean even now the PS4 is 300. Yeah, no, it's, it's I, well, especially for us like it's kind of a given that we're going to get it. Like if it was four hundred dollars, I would have gotten it. Mm-hmm. If it was five hundred, I would have gotten it. If it was six hundred, I still would have gotten it. <laughs> I don't know if it, if, if it was if it was above three hundred, I would have possibly. If waited. it was six hundred, it felt reasonably justified. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like it's kind of like you're preaching to the choir for me, so the price isn't so oh, much. Yeah. But like just from like a market <clears throat> standpoint, yeah. I still feel like three hundred. Like I can see where people will say like three hundred is too expensive, yeah. because when you look at it like that, it is the same price as a PlayStation. Yeah. So, like, if somebody's like... Oh. Yeah, but it's... You have to consider it's, like... I mean, it's not a PlayStation 4, right, right. but it's pretty much a current-gen console yeah. that's portable. Yeah. But with all you, this other tech in it. Always comes down to marketing, I yeah. feel like, because the general public, they're not going to really understand the feasibility or the, the practicality mm-hmm. of having the portable console. And maybe it doesn't even, like, suit their yeah. style. Yeah. So, well, I, I know, I'm just super curious, because, like, I can see this being something that, like... Because, like, just the, the fact that you can bring it anywhere and just hand somebody a controller. Mm-hmm. That's just, like, such a like such a simple concept, but it has so many, like... Just no, like I'm you go to your like, family's house, like, for Thanksgiving or whatever, and then you're just bored and you're like, hey, do this. And then everybody's like, oh, that's so funny. You do the milking the cow thing. Mm-hmm. But, oh, yeah. well, that translates to those people. Those people actually yes, buying... Yes, yes, yes. I, I think so. Because, really? like, look... The, it's such a captivating thing. Like, all yeah. the things you can do on it, it's so captivating. It's so unique. That's true. And, yeah. like, the only... Like, the graphics... that The, well, the only downside the I can think of... The general public doesn't care about No, graphics. exactly. Yeah, yeah. no. That, yeah. Like, that's the thing. Is the People are complaining about how... Because it's portable, like, oh, it's less powerful. But no one's going to care about that. Oh, yeah. They yeah. won't care at all. Especially, yeah. like, kids. My oh, God, yeah. kids, like, five-year-olds, <laughs> do you think they care at all what resolution the system is? <laughs> Or Besides, like, like they don't care about even battery life. They don't care. Like, don't play this. <laughs> this is only 720p. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the like, other what? thing is, I, I predict that this console is going to have a long, like, at least six years, mm. um, and like maybe two years down the road, they give it a price drop before Christmas. Okay. So, like, well, let's let's ask ourselves this: When the Wii came out, I remember when I first saw it, I predicted this was my only this is my claim to fame as far as predictions goes. The only time I've ever been right about anything, I said this is going to be huge. This is going to like like everybody who doesn't play games is going to love this thing do we think the same thing is going to happen with this not as big as the mm. Wii I think I think it'll do all right. Mm. I don't want to because it's like that sort of gameplay is kind of given now like when the Wii came out it was really unique now we've got devices that have touch screens and motion controls Mm, there's just a lot to consider now because there's I mean, Satoru Iwata passed away, so there's mm-hmm. a new president. They might take a new direction with marketing mm-hmm. and things like that, and mm-hmm. do a bigger push. Or, so it's really hard to say because this is new console, new president. It's going to be something we probably haven't seen. Like the, the, this is what I think: the 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 motion controls and stuff. That's really going to help. But the big hit is the portability, like you said. Yeah. The ability to take it anywhere and have actual controllers, yeah. I think that's where it's going to get that market. You know, also, like, I just thought about this as you were saying that, but the stigma for playing games is gone. Mm. Like, when I was, when we were growing up, like, playing a Game Boy in public, there was, like, the kind of thing in the back of your mind, like, oh, it's people That's because, like, people funny. who are, like, 40, 50, they're, they grew up at playing games. Like, yeah. They, no, yeah, now so. it's like, no, I'm, like, 32. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like, that's, weird. that's that is a... a that used to be middle age. It's not middle age anymore. But still, like people, exactly as you said, people in their forties, like they played games. It's not weird anymore. And like mm-hmm. especially with phones, everybody plays games. Yeah. Like yeah. playing Bejeweled or whatever. Um, I was just thinking about what you were talking about. How the, the Joy Cons, you can just hand someone a controller. I was thinking about that, and I think that'll be really big with like the younger kids. Yeah, yeah. Like if you think about it, because how many mm-hmm. times have you been playing a video game like a kid wants to play? And you're oh, like, oh yeah. I can't. But then you're now you're just like Shh, okay let's play you know? yeah, yeah it's like i'll pull up that street really fighter big appeal for, ultra yeah. street fighter 2 they'll yeah. be like oh i can buy one and then they can both play and blah, blah, blah. there's just so many possibilities on what they could do too like yeah just yeah. so many things <laughs> so the built-in storage is 32 gigabytes mm-hmm. but you can use a 256 gigabyte sd card right so the 32 gigabytes that is not enough storage 
Like not even close. Because like uh, Breath of the Wild, they've already confirmed that's. But 11 all of that gigabytes. is on the cartridge, it's cartridge now. now, though, which is a big plus for me. That's true, but I almost am willing to go all no I, i'll still go physical but like i almost want to get digital copies too yeah just so yeah, that yeah. the portability like mm. you've got all your games right there like yeah. in that instance especially where kid, on the switch yeah well for me it'll be the same way that i handle it on my um on my 3ds mm. i get the physical games that i play from time to time but if there's a game i always want to make sure i have like Monster Animal Crossing, Hunter. Monster Hunter, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Smash Bros. I get oh, digital, yeah. so I'll probably go kind of like half in on the on like mm. a micro SD or something. I also feel like because uh, I gotta have that Zelda all the time. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is partly because of the battery life, but I also feel like a lot of the games people will be downloading are gonna be smaller games. So like, oh yeah, ones that are both mm-hmm. ones Pick that both take up less space and also use less power. Yeah. That's act- well, I was gonna say now that you mention it. Mm. The kind of games you want to download are the kinds that yeah, pick suit up a play. portable, yeah, like yeah. pick up and play type stuff. Yeah, things where yeah. you can slide those things off yeah. and just... And that's not going to be like a triple A. Yeah, and people, yeah, are, yeah. people are overreacting because they hear Zelda's 13.4 gig, gigabytes. I mean, it's, it's Zelda. a huge Have game. Have you seen yeah. the game? Yeah. 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 You can't true. compare the typical game that's to true. that. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, but I mean, like, you put a Zelda on there and a Xenoblade on there. And oh, okay, so yeah, that was a surprise, Xenoblade yeah. 2. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's exciting. I, I still haven't finished the first one, but... I haven't played the first one. I played Chronicles X, and I got really into it. Um, I like the combat now. It was that too used... massive. No, well, so no, not that. It. It's just that <laughs> the s- okay. Apparently, according to people who played both Xenoblade, hmm? sorry, you can keep oh, okay. <laughs> according to people who played both Xenoblade and Chronicles X, they say that Xenoblade was more story driven, whereas yeah, Chronicles yeah, yeah. X was focused more on the open world. Mm, yeah, thing, which is cool. I like that, but. You always need that story I kind of pushing that you story. forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there's yeah. not enough in an open world game, you just kind of eventually put it down. You're like, yeah. what am I doing now? I don't so. Yeah. You know, it's funny because every time I see, like, promotional stuff for Xenoblade, I'm like, wow, that is, like, so my aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it just doesn't excite me when I see the actual game for some reason. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this one was also kind of chuggy. I'm I'm sure it'd be fun, but it's just, like, when you've got Breath of the Wild coming out, it's like, okay, so yeah, what do yeah. I need? It, I think what really will come down to it is how they handle if they're going to go with their same Xenoblade combat style Mm. Mm. which I liked but I wouldn't mind like a more traditional RPG style Mm. because it kind of I don't know it just kind of paces a game better when you're trying to tell a story I Mm. I don't know something about it well speaking of traditional RPGs they've actually that was actually a little clip that they showed I Am Setsuna do you know that game I saw that oh yeah yeah. so that's it's out already right that's out on PlayStation 4 but um, apparently they're porting it and that's a made by a group of developers that was inspired by the 16-bit RPGs. Mm-hmm. But speaking of which, um, Octopath, Octopath yes. Traveler. Traveler. <laughs> I'm really excited for that. It looks awesome. Yeah. It's so funny because the other day somebody asked me, I said, what would it take for the Nintendo Switch to be your favorite console of all time over the Super Nintendo? I said, I don't know, maybe if they make a couple of pixel art RPGs. Well, I said pixel art Zelda, but it's that too. If they made yeah. some pixel art RPGs, and there you go, they gave one right away. Yeah, it like, looks great, and I love how they integrated like three, it, yeah, it's yeah. 3D Everything seems pixel mm-hmm. art, yeah. but they also have like the re- like real time lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks really cool. Breath of the Default wasn't pixel, was it? Pixel art? Uh, no, no, it was, no, it was 3D. 3D. Yeah. yeah. See, it's funny because like I've been craving an RPG, traditional RPG, since I beat the latest Golden Sun on DS. Like I love Golden Sun for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I like I played the demo for Bla- Bravely Default, but I never got the games. Mm. And like I don't the know demo why, was but... fantastic. I mean, I remember I 100 percent of that demo, <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna get the game. <laughs> It always takes... It's weird. With RPGs, I love RPGs, but I always need someone to kind of like pull me into it first for me mm, to get started, yeah. I feel like. Well, I think, like uh, especially RPGs, sometimes I, I like thinking about them more than I like playing them. Like, mm. just I love the aesthetic, I love the music, and I just love like looking at it, but then when it actually comes time to play it, I'm like, nah, I'm not that interested in playing yeah. it. <laughs> that doesn't always happen, but sometimes. Like, yeah. the, they had one piece of art for Octopath where they're all sitting like in a tavern oh, or something. I, I love, love that sort of stuff. God, yeah. I love it so much, dude. It's like, I, like that. I like that art style, the Bravely Default art yeah, style. Yeah, I want to live that, man. <laughs> it's like, how can I just like, you know, like those Narnias or the Indian in the cupboard where things come to life? Like, I want yeah. that to come yeah. to life. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, I, I think Breath of the Wild is going to be my like most favorite game ever mm-hmm, but i mm-hmm. want something that is exactly that but multiplayer you oh know? like some sort of open world adventure rpg Holy story cow, driven dude. but all of us can play it <laughs> God, i think we all so have amazing. a lot of desires like um yeah. let's see 
Breath of the Wild engine plus Monster Hunter. <coughs> yes. Oh my God! Speaking that of which, was... they didn't show Monster Hunter. That was kind of they surprising. Did, yeah. Yeah. Because I remember there were some rumors circulating. Oh no, that was before the Monster Hunter Direct, mm-hmm. before they announced like Monster Hunter Cross. Generations mm-hmm. Double Cross yeah. or whatever. There's it's there's no doubt it's eventually gonna happen. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my God. You know what I'm really hoping so fun. that they announce, or something is some sort of tactics game or mm. uh, isometric game because mm. final fantasy switch dicks yeah yes. <laughs> well when i saw the the when they were doing octopath dad and i saw the art I was octopath like, oh, this- dad. <laughs> <laughs> Octo dad. <laughs> that's a funny game <laughs> the first thing i saw when i saw the art it reminded me of final fantasy tactics art oh uh, yeah it's no it's yeah it's very similar yeah tactics games i don't know i I like I like them, but I can never really get into them because it takes too much thinking. Yeah, you have to get good at them, and once yeah. you get a good party going, and then you just like smash your people, oh, you're just so like. Good. That might have been partly what turned me off to Bravely. Like I played the demo of Bravely Default, but when I play RPGs, I actually don't like thinking about like uh, see, all yeah, the stats and stuff. That's it's, what I love about yeah, it's RPGs funny. is when you build the perfect party and you're like, I'm gonna mix these two classes together, yeah. and they're gonna be a tank. And a healer. No, it's yeah. funny because all I ever do is like if I get a new equipment, I'm like, well, if the main thing like the attack or the defense, if that's like higher, I just yeah. equip it. <laughs> like, anything else, I'm like, whatever. Yeah, no, it's I, I know what you mean. Um, okay, so switching topics slightly, the Pun intended. launch titles. <laughs> There's only two of them. Yeah, but it's Zelda. <laughs> no, I know. Okay, but for, for most people, yeah, that's a problem that there's only two. Yeah, yeah for yeah. us, it's like Zelda's good enough to hold. No, me okay. For here's a while. the thing. What what came out at launch for GameCube? I mean, maybe GameCube's like, not the, the best Zelda example. And and one two switch. One two switch. And then I think Bomberman. Yeah, yeah. I think that was mm-hmm. that's in March. But like the next game comes out in April. It's like a month later. That's like, yeah. that's always been Nintendo's problem though. I mean, since the Nintendo sixty four, no, since Super Nintendo. Yeah, I was gonna say because GameCube it was like Rogue Super- Squadron and Wave Race or something. Yeah, that was and Luigi's Mansion. But maybe that's and just Super Monkey a Ball. uniquely Nintendo problem. problem. <laughs> yeah, it's usually. But I mean, I don't need a lot of games. I just like the third party support is still like it's not but there, and it's I don't get in there. To be honest, we'll like, see. can you name? Okay, well, I can't. I can't. But can you name a console that had a really, really strong launch? Where people would look at them and be like, "That's a good launch lineup." That's a great point because, like Nintendo game, uh, Nintendo systems, they always launch with one killer app. Yeah. What was so, PS4's launch? I mean, or Xbox One? Like, X- yeah, no, that's a good, good point. Yeah, I can't yeah. even remember. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know PS4 had Killzone Shadowfall. I think that was like, mm. yeah, that was a pretty crappy launch. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing, yeah, like Nintendo, like it's Zelda. Like, yeah, come yeah, on. yeah no, like, I was mostly playing yeah. Devil's Advocate no, just because of the number, but I totally yeah, get what you, people are saying. But yeah. Just, because yeah zelda that's yeah, huge yeah. that's that's single-handedly what got me to buy the um the wii the wii launch, yeah yeah me too was yeah. twilight princess uh and that's why i didn't buy the wii u at launch was because there wasn't really anything mm-hmm. inspiring yeah you, well, dude out. that speaks volumes mm-hmm. that none of us bought a wii u at launch yeah like yeah that is how bad of a situation nintendo yeah. was they in had, with the wii u that was that is a bad launch because they had the nintendo wii land Wii Sports, the Sports Two, Nintendo Land. Wait, Wii Sports Two? Did they? Have... No, no, I think it was just Nintendo, Nintendo Land. Land. Yeah. And um, they they had really new casual. Super Mario Bros. Oh yeah, yeah, New Super Mario Brothers yeah. Wii U. Oh, yeah. not even that 3D was Land. It was wow, yeah. No, 3D, not even 3D World. Yeah. See, here's the like the irony is that the Wii U ended up having a lot of great games, and now they're being ported over to the Switch. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like. I, I'm definitely happy about that because I feel like we haven't played them enough or whatever, and they, like well, those games deserve more than the Wii U. Oh yeah, like Smash Bros. and Mario yeah. Kart, but and then Splatoon too. I also feel yeah. conflicted about spending money on the same game. Yeah, <laughs> even though I it's updated. Sure, yeah, yeah. Although is Mario Kart really getting 16 new tracks? Because that's what I heard. Oh really? And, and, and a real that. battle mode. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's 60 new tracks, it's basically a new Mario Kart. I mean, it's gonna be awesome, dude. Yeah. 60 60 frames per second. We each have our own <clears> screen. <throat> That's pretty fun, dude. Oh, yeah. It was 60 frames portable, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. 60 frames portable. So even in split screen, apparently. Too. Which, I mean, technically it's like last-gen graphics, but it but looks it beautiful. Looks so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually reassuring because like a lot of the trailers they were showing in the stream, mm-hmm. like maybe it was just the low stream quality, but I was like, man, this is, I don't even know if this looks as good as the Wii U. Right, right. But clearly it I think is. it's all the developers, too. Like, yeah, I, feel I guess like that's so, a big yeah. part. Well, yeah. 
I mean, and I mean, a lot of the stuff was probably still early. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I know that the Shin Megami Tensei trailer was like they just threw it together. Yeah, the last yeah, yeah. Second, well, somebody was saying that they were using a lot of animations from the Persona Five game. Mm-hmm. So, but like Mario it's Galaxy like on par stands up till today. Like, oh, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. on Wii. <laughs> oh man, it looks fantastic. Which is basically a GameCube. Um, the battery life. So actually, yeah. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the battery life mm-hmm. because. They said Breath of the Wild would be three hours. So that's probably like one of their most graphically intensive <clears throat> games. And that's going to be three hours. They said yeah. it could go up to like, I think they said six. Yeah, six. If they're, six. If they're they, their low estimate was like two hours, that's probably like a game like using oh, they Wi-Fi. Said that? Two and a half. Well, oh, they said that? They I, said, I thought three hours was the lowest. Well, the range, they said it. Two, two from the most intensive to like six hours. Two and a half to six and a half. Ooh. Yeah, and I would say two and a half is probably if you're using like Rumble... Wi-Fi and all mm-hmm. that stuff, and, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but honestly, I don't know what people expected. Like, I mean, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, right if you're gonna if you're gonna take this thing out and play for more than three or four hours, then you're probably gonna bring a charger. Six anyway. hours is great. Like, uh, I think anything above three hours is great. Mm-hmm. It's just that how many games are actually gonna be above three hours is what my yeah. Concern is. Well, how how often are you gonna be playing? For more than three hours yeah. on the go, that's well, I guess true. on the plane. Well, yeah, yeah, on the plane. But they well, they all have outlets now, anyway. Yeah, that's true. You can just yeah. plug a USB yeah. in, and yeah. But I mean, it's, but even if you compare <clears throat> it to a phone, like phones, if you play a game, they don't last more than two hours. Yeah. So I mean, it's it, it's oh, you're right. Better than a phone, yeah. so it's still on par with other technology. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean the. One thing is, though, like, the, the kinds of games you would be playing for a long time are the ones that won't last long. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I mean, they, they could release some really engrossing indie games, I guess, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I... When people complain about the battery life, I guess maybe it's because I don't see it the same way, but I'm just like, if you're going to play a game for that long, then maybe you should invest in a portable, too, or something, mm. and not expect a portable console well to i mean I, I think this might be this kind of like a bridge you know like this is the this is the eventuality yeah. right because once technology gets far enough you won't need to have like a well presumably you won't need to have a home console so like all consoles will be like this mm-hmm. so this could just be like first step do you know? think that this will end the 3ds that is such a good question and i do not know the answer i don't think it will um but it's hard to say <clears throat> because it's just price point right because like a 2ds is a hundred dollars yeah so that's still like a throwaway hey you know just give the kid yeah. a and the 2DS. 3ds is still like you know it's a big thing in japan mm-hmm. and i think i think m- what they might do is they might see how the population or how this, yeah, the market yeah. accepts because mm-hmm. i can't imagine they're gonna want to from that like i can't imagine they're developing any major things for ds right now yeah but if it does remain popular, maybe they would. But it's also been out since 2011. So. Not to mention, they always, they always, always say that it's a p- hybrid <clears throat> console and then portable. Like mm-hmm. a, they, they don't say it's a portable and a console. They say it's a console that you can take somewhere. Yeah. Like they never really. It's not big enough to put it in your pocket, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's too big to put it in your pocket. <laughs> it's not small enough to put it in your pocket. So I don't know. The DS still has that advantage of just being yeah. like your grabbing gogurt (laughs) (laughs) um although yeah no i was gonna say i feel like everyone's got a bag these days anyway (laughs) yeah that's true so i'm curious to know what you guys think about their online plans Mm, very Mm. disturbing yeah i'm very disturbed by it like oh god Uh, it's an app it's a separate app that you use to do voice chat Mm -hmm. that's fine but that it's just as inconvenient as using Google Hangouts like we already do. Now, know? do we know for sure it's going to stay like that, or do you think they could update it? Because there's a lot of things where they're, like, the share button, for example, they're going to add in the video feature mm, later. That's a good point. But just the fact that they... Yeah. That this is how they're launching it is very disturbing to me. I'm like... If it was free, then fine. But the fact that it is a subscription service now, it's like... Yeah. Well, the other thing is, like... For major third-party games where online multiplayer is a focus, why would I not get it on the PS4 instead? Well, maybe that's what they're thinking. That people will do that? Yeah, that people will just get it for the PS4, so why even bother trying to go after that market? Mm. Yeah, but then why make it a paid subscription? Yeah, I don't know. Well, so part of the paid subscription is that you get... 
a free virtual console game to play per month. Like a free monthly demo. No. Yeah. yeah, it's the demo, right? It's not, you don't... No, 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 no. It's, it's a full it's, game, but you, you only get to play No, yeah, but you don't keep it. But you don't yeah. keep it. Yeah. So it's not like PlayStation Plus where you get free games every month and then you get to but keep them as long as you have a subscription. To be fair, it took them a long time before they implemented oh, really? that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. They didn't have free games right off the bat. Hmm. I mean, there weren't even like digital downloads when they first launched, so... No, no, no. When they, when they started PlayStation Plus... Really? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you yeah, might but be... when they first started their online. Yeah, venture. when they first started their online, it wasn't even paid. It was That's free. True. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the, somebody was playing devil's advocate and said the one good thing about having one virtual console game per month, especially if it's online play, is that the pool of people playing will be much bigger because every month everybody's oh, playing that one game. Oh, yeah, that's so true. So it's not like everybody just like. You, you have small communities right. for each game. It's like you get a big community for every game every month. But do yeah. people assume that that month and then it's gone or something? Because I would assume... No, that... I, I'm pretty sure that's what they said. Wait, so are they implementing like matchmaking into some of these games? I don't know about that. I, I doubt it. But maybe that's where the app comes into play. Oh, is yeah, they do yeah, the yeah, matchmaking yeah. through the app. And mm. that's maybe that's why they're doing it, because they're adding it to something like virtual console I still console think games. the app is like not a good idea, though, because... The the switch itself is a portable tablet. Yeah, I don't so want to have to move to another device to yeah, do that. It's, that's just terrible. But to be fair, you always have your phone with you. That's true, yeah. but, yeah, but I still. hate having to do it. You know, mm-hmm. like whenever we play Monster Hunter, and I'm like, oh, I gotta make sure my phone's charged. And oh, just, I gotta find yeah. my headphones. You and know? the <laughs> idea of like going to my phone, it just feels clunky, and like yeah, I feel yeah. like it'll be slow. Oh yeah. I just yeah. want to be able to like be on the switch, press a button, and then yeah, yeah. we're talking. Plug yeah. in a headset, and boom. Which there's no reason you shouldn't be able to because it has a headphone jack. Yeah, no, it's 2016, okay? Yeah. When the Wii came out in 2006, it was, even then, it was borderline inexcusable. Mm-hmm. Ten years later, <clears throat> this is like, it's annoying. Yeah, it's yeah. like inexcusable and annoying at this point. It's like, can we please just have like some nice, good technology for your voice chat yeah. so <laughs> we can just immediately talk to each other? Yeah. It's like PlayStation 4 or X, well, Xbox, I don't even know what they're doing. But like PlayStation 4, you just start a party. Like even when you're not in the game, you're just talking to each other. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very social experience. Yeah, I don't know about Xbox One, but Xbox 360, it was like that. Yeah, too. Xbox 360 <laughs> was fantastic. Yeah, Xbox that. One, now you have to like Xbox One literally run on a track and jump hurdles. <laughs> I can have a whole conversation about how annoying the Xbox One UI is and like how unusable it is. Um but I was going to say, yeah, back to Switch. <laughs> what I was saying originally was I don't mind, or I don't think the idea of having like a friends list on your phone is terrible. The voice chat thing, that's. Mm-mm, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, but, that's fine. But being able yeah, to go to your yeah. phone and be like, oh, let's play this and like invite people yeah, through your phone, that's not But too it bad. should also that's be on the boy. Switch, I think. Like, I think yeah. it would be great yeah, if it was I'm an addition. I'm not saying it's a terrible idea. Maybe yeah. Yeah. things like matchmaking, though, <clears throat> are on the Switch as well. I'm sure. But maybe yeah. voice chat is one mm. of the few things that's only on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, is, <clears throat> are we really not going to be able to access a friends list on the Switch? Itself? No, I doubt that. Because that would be ridiculous <clears throat> yeah. if you can't. But, but I mean, it, w- even if you, if you couldn't access a friends list on the Switch, I, I just don't understand how you would go from b- mobile to, like, joining a game with someone. Like, if you didn't have yeah. some sort of way of adding something. Like, if it's know. just an app where it's, like, if you aren't on the Switch and you see your friends are on and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll get on. That's that's good. That's cool, because yeah. then you could even get notifications. <clears throat> like when but if the app playing. is, like, compulsory, like, if you have to use it, yeah, that defeats well, the entire purpose of the Switch. Like, well, that's... The, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, like, in the 3DS, you add someone's 3DS, but you don't necessarily join games through the 3ds os it's usually within some in-game thing yeah mm. so you may add people and then you could use the phone to like connect or to, to join people or the developer may choose to add some sort of in-game way of doing it mm. well see now that i think about it the requirement to have a, a phone to play online seems like they can't be doing that because then that would be asking people to have a phone as well yeah. and those are not inexpensive devices yeah. <laughs> maybe they're gonna release a nintendo phone <laughs> <laughs> well that was people's like theory before yeah. it was like they might do a phone yeah i, I think know. that's just it, it could be that this is just their preliminary like um maybe it's one way to make it seem more appealing to a mass public yeah yeah it was like oh i know how to use a phone yeah that's that's great but still is the voice chat really through the app yeah, well, from from what I've heard so far, yes. Yeah, well, okay. So I don't know. 
Uh, I didn't go over all the technical specs, but is there a microphone or is there a way to have them? There's a headphone jack. There's a headphone jack and for you can sure, use but those I don't know for... about a microphone. Okay. But you can't, couldn't you use that as a... If it's built for that, yeah. 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 But if it's just a headphone jack, which they should, I guess because... we'll see. Because the Wii did eventually get Wii Speak, which was terrible, but they did eventually add something. Was that the thing where you had to plug in the separate dongle? You or... put it on top of the TV. That's it terrible. Was yeah. It was insanity. It was, it was, it was... Not good. I don't understand. Like, why can't they just... <laughs> I don't I don't either. They, like, they create so many good ideas that become standards. They need to take some of the good ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's really weird. I mean, a headphone jack, that should be a microphone jack because yeah. everyone has a phone with a headset with a thing in it, you know? Well, it's weird, too, because of how they're, like, <clears throat> the they often are very social in their gaming. So, like, yeah, it's all yeah. about the social nature of it. But mm-hmm. for some reason, when it comes to online play, they're like, no, no, no. Nobody's talking to each other. <laughs> yeah. hey, nobody's yeah. knowing who each other is. Well, I think it's part of it numbers. is they're like super afraid of yeah. like oh predators. That's and, true. That's and true. And it's like why? Like <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's the reality they need to face that the internet has been around for a while now. Yeah, it's yeah. like I don't know. Like like um, what's it? The swap note. Oh yeah, swap Just, note got taken down. Yeah, swap note got taken down. Yeah, because yeah. but wasn't were... there a new swap note now? There is. Yeah. <clears throat> we can um, get on that. <laughs> I am on it. I've got messages floating in the cloud waiting for you guys to get on it. I'm going to get on it tonight. <laughs> I haven't touched my 3DS in a long time. Yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that might answer whether the 3DS is going to survive or not. Yeah, yeah. But that's actually, I think, might be more of a function of the fact that they're not really making that many 3DS games now. Mm-hmm. The yeah. 3DS is, an, is ne- nearing the end of it's the cycle. It's got to be. Yeah, man, because what a great system. If they, don't, if they do continue a portable um, line... It's got to transition with the Switch, you know, at some point. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, you can't continue to advertise the 3DS alongside the Switch. One thing we still haven't talked about is Mario Odyssey. Oh, yeah. Which, mm-hmm. what do you all think? I, I'm i super excited that they're going back to the Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, like, hub world. Mm-hmm. You go to the sandbox yeah. and you go to the star. I did not like the way the city looked. And not even so much that just the graphics were terrible in the city mm-hmm. like the humans like they had this terrible frame rate and then yeah, they had yeah. these weird dithering mm-hmm. problems and, but i'm sure that's just because it's early yeah. but also i found it weird that there's real humans mixed in with <laughs> no Mario. it's funny cause... well i'm oh, sorry i was just gonna say everything besides this the the human world looked great oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so yeah, i think yeah. it just has something to do with but they opened yeah. with the human world so mm-hmm. it left a really i was like i think that's just to throw on? people yeah. off yeah. no it's funny because i saw that and i was like joking like oh it's mario because <laughs> <laughs> i saw the real humans like it can't be mario and it's like oh it donk is. city <laughs> <laughs> it's like all donkey Kong. Right? but yeah. th- it was funny because when like they King opened Kong. with that yeah. city like I was literally what was going through my head was like this looks terrible. Oh yeah, yeah I was yeah. like, what is this? Like some kitty GTA? Yeah, no, yeah. I thought it was like supposed to be like good graphics. You know, I, I didn't think it was supposed to be like stylized like Mario style graphics. And I was like, man, they, this system is underpowered because that looks god awful. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then Mario popped up, and I was like, oh. And then once they showed the other worlds, I was like, okay, that looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. For some reason, just I don't know. Yeah. And I also wonder how they're going to work that into the the story. I, I mean, I know it's story is not the focus of Mario, but like, you know, yeah, I don't think they care at all. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I think because the point of Mario is to give some reason that he can go to crazy places. Yeah. It's That's literally, all it needs. <laughs> literally, like in the trailer, like you know how like so <clears> many like there. Did you guys see that ridiculous article about Super Mario Run? And it was like. Super Mario runs gender politics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, dude, you need to pick your battles. Like, like hey, this yes. Super Mario That's run exactly is not what it, I said. Man. I was like, if you're gonna fight, if you're gonna fight some sort of gender battle, don't pick Super Mario. It's run. Mario. <laughs> no one's gonna take <laughs> you seriously. So dumb. Like, I was just like, okay. But then it was funny because like you think like. It'd be possible Nintendo be like, okay, well maybe we need to change it. Nintendo was like, nope. <laughs> Just in this one too, Princess Peach was like, Mario. Save me. <laughs> like, what's the story? I don't know. Princess Peach gets stolen again. <laughs> like she's some property. <laughs> they just need an excuse for Mario to run around. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're just some some games and franchises where you don't try and like argue with that they stuff. have had pre- peach playable in some games though she had her own yeah. game well she time. had her own game but people were like know. oh but she uses her emotions as powers and that's like gender stereotype <laughs> or something i was like man this is like this went <laughs> then yeah this is a whole other conversation <laughs> another thing that really bothered me i was just thinking about this whole gender thing is when is the the zelda reveal uh in, in breath of the yeah, wild yeah, people yeah. Are like oh female link female link i'm like guys get over it there's no female link 
not in this game, maybe in a future game, but just let it go, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, actually, if we do want to talk about the gender stuff for a second, I heard an interesting thing. Uh, per Schneider, the guy who runs IGN, mm -hmm. he was talking on a podcast, and he was selling, saying that his daughter loves Final Fantasy XV, even though it's all male characters. Mm -hmm. But she likes it because it's like, um, she likes watching like the friendship it's not so much like the gender thing that's the problem it's just that it's the same story every yeah, time yeah, yeah. it's just mm -hmm. doom guy with a big suit well, that's that is people. one thing it's like with regards to that there is a political aspect to it and like i think there's some games where it's like whatever some games it's bigger problem obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean there's no denying there's a lot of games with that problem yeah yeah, yeah. but it's like just from a taste standpoint, I want unique stories. Like, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> like, and like unique characters that are human. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, going off a little off topic, but I, I won't go any further into this. The Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh -huh. That's an example of putting a female yeah, in yeah. the protagonist lead or protagonist spot. That seems and makes sense without like being really stereotyped or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, one more thing, because this is interesting. The, <laughs> the, there was a, a thread on NeoGAF, and the guy was like, okay, I'm tired of hearing this because I, I got to address this. People are saying, like, oh, I can't empathize with uh, a female protagonist, mm. okay? Because I was like, I, he's like, look, yes, you can empathize with them. <laughs> the only people who can't empathize with a, somebody who is not like you are psychopaths. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Do people yeah. actually say that as an argument? Yeah, some people say that. And it's just like, it's so ridiculous. It's like, you can empathize with anybody. You just have to understand their plight. How, like, you know? yeah, you have Whatever to be a psychopath. Whatever their plight happens to, to be, that, yeah. you know? You have to be a psychopath. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's also funny because I was like, I was watching the Seinfeld where they're trying to figure out how to write Elaine into their script or whatever. Uh-huh. And it's like it's funny to the, that people have trouble writing for a woman because it's like just write for a human. Like, yeah, just write yeah. for a human. <laughs> exactly, it happens to be a woman. Like yeah. that's all you do. <laughs> you no, know, I, I was thinking about that. Like, um, oh no, no, no. This this is uh, slightly unrelated, but um, the <clears throat> it's okay to have like. So there was more controversy recently. There's a game called Near Automata, where oh yeah, this um, girl wears B2. yeah she wears a scantily clad costume and you can see her thong and her butt and all that stuff. Here's the thing, man. All of that stuff is fine. Okay, it's totally fine if you like that and enjoy that. The problem comes in when people are like, uh, they. They when somebody says like oh I also want to be represented and then you feel like you're being attacked yeah. it's like you're not being attacked you can just play the game with your butts and your boobs and all that stuff they just want other games also that don't have butts and boobs and well yeah, that's yeah. the other thing is like when people talk about this is going off on a whole other, <laughs> but when people talk about like Anita Sarkeesian and whatever uh -huh. it's like yeah. like you can critique a game and still enjoy it yeah, like, yeah, yeah. in fact I, I would say that it enriches the experience oh like, yeah absolutely like, no one's saying you can't play this game because there's one Andrew, button yeah. our, the number one critique of destiny who enjoys it no exactly yeah <laughs> like, I, hate, I hate that game so much and I love it too <laughs> no that's such a good point it's like it, it, you are never going to love something <clears throat> unconditionally and you yeah. can have problems with it like Final Fantasy 15 like I think it is like one of the greatest games ever but there's problems with it yeah. right and I like when people People like uh criticize like you guys know cindy from final fantasy 15 yeah when uh, they criticize her character design i'm like yeah totally see it i'm fine with it but that doesn't mean other people are gonna be fine with it and when other people critique it i'm like yo go for it you can yeah. critique it all yeah. to your no heart's content like, yeah like people it's so funny because it's like people are like oh you're so offended by it yeah. like but you're work getting worked up about people <laughs> talking about it <laughs> yeah. uh, but actually i will say that um some people complained on NeoGAF, of course, about like, they were like, oh, Princess Zelda's crying in the trailer. And I was like, you have no idea what the context of yeah, that is. Yeah, you have zero idea in what fact, the In fact, when I saw is, the trailer, yeah. I got the feeling that she was a very like strong character. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been fighting these in incredible battles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She seemed like, like to be more integrated. Well, I mean, well, first of all, it isn't your typical Zelda <clears throat> story where she, you're rescuing her right, exactly. from yeah, Ganon yeah. and she's not even part of the story. She's part of the story. She's with Link and presumably, presumably, from what we've seen, yeah. yeah. But from what we've seen, they show so much of her. It feels like there's she's going to be at least, you know, mm -hmm. in most of the at some some of the story to the point where she feels like an actual character rather than something you're working towards. Yeah, yeah. you know, like something that's in, insignificant. Yeah, it could yeah. go either way. I, I I get the vibe that she's like a warrior woman. Yeah, mm, but, yeah, yeah. But who knows? 
Oh, I, I kind of want to keep talking about the whole. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> well, no, it's just like the. I, my my question really is is like where does it become a problem? Because you know like where is it actually harmful? Like so mm-hmm. for instance like Nier Automata right? It's a Japanese game made by a pervy Japanese dude who wants a pervy Japanese or a pervy character, pervy female character in the lead role. Yeah. Like does, is that not allowed to exist? Like clearly it is allowed to exist, but clearly. We also need, I think that's what it really is. It's mm. just an imbalance, right? Yeah, yeah. You have those type of things. But there's also not that many female game developers. Like, that's kind of the problem, too. But then it comes into the que- the, the yeah. other problem is that you've got all these games, so they don't feel like they can join the club because they're like, oh, these games are just made for horny dudes with yeah. their the well, boobs in their butts. <laughs> there was also that, um, it was some some concept where you have, the game sameness or whatever mm. because you see one game be successful mm. so you try to emulate it in as many ways oh, as you yeah. can and so that's like kind of what the industry is moving fo- towards is that yeah, it's like bald got, space marines oh, yeah. <laughs> well, kids like playing this guy shooting people up okay well let's make a game where guy right and he shoots people up and it continues like it continues to sell well so they just continue to make more games like that there's there's no need for diver- diversity because yeah but see that goes back to the whole thing where it's like it's not just about the political aspect but also like just from a taste standpoint yeah 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 it allows you to create better art look at princess mononoke princess mononoke is a strong female character yeah yeah and they don't put it in your face and like well i mean it's it's also like even if you're looking at it from purely a business standpoint like you are missing out on a huge is it still going yeah it's still going you're missing out on a huge part of the market Mm -hmm. if you're ignoring females Mm -hmm. because take a look at frozen yeah two female main characters neither one of them get saved by the male characters <laughs> i've like, never they, actually watched frozen from start to finish <laughs> they are the protagonists they they win the story by themselves they don't mm-hmm. need any dudes mm. and that movie is like crack for kids like they <laughs> yeah, put yeah. something in there that just kids love it male or female star wars even yeah star wars even but like so if you look at it from a business standpoint they're missing out on half of the population but no, also oh. if you're looking at like i want people to make things for the sake i hate that it's always involved in like they want they have to make something that sells like i want you to make the thing that you're inspired that's the thing Mm -hmm. is there's all these dumb producer types who are oh this will make the best money according to these yeah it's like just make something great like (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) it doesn't matter like i just want something that came from your heart and that moves me in some way or another it could be Something that makes me sad, something that makes me happy, something that makes me angry, but just something that you felt a need to make, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like the last game that I played that really felt different and like it took a risk in terms of like story and, and, and deviating from your typical game was uh, The Last of Us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because even though like it had like your typical zombies and shooting and stuff like that, the the story, the way they built the story between Joel and Ellie, like it felt... Like they were really trying to, I don't really know how to explain it, mm-hmm. but it just felt like there was more thought put into that than your typical, you know, trying to turn out some AAA game. Because that mm-hmm. game was obviously, it was received very well. And they took a risk with like, you know, going with the little girl as kind of like a protagonist. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> just my thoughts on that. Just in general, it's like, I'm tired of bald space marines and like... <laughs> Oh, well, it's, it's kind of funny because Doom came out last year, mm-hmm. and that got a lot of accolades because it like kind of reinvented and like sort of tongue in cheek. Oh, really? It, not tongue in cheek exactly, but it was kind of self aware yeah, yeah, yeah. of how ridiculous Doom is, mm-hmm. and people loved the campaign. But just like the aesthetic of that game is just like unappealing. <laughs> like literally, it's one of my favorite words: anathema to me. Like, it's just <laughs> like when I look at it, I'm like, oh god, I do not want to play a game where I'm some bald space marine in hell shooting people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny though is that i've always said that I, i'm tired of shooting games i want like some sort of sword sword fighting like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah but even then like any game that's kind of like medieval or sword fighting it's kind of moving into mm. the sameness too yeah, yeah. Mm. it's got to be this gritty sword fighting yeah like dark thing and it's like why can't i have that's this? why i don't like dark souls actually it's too dark and too dank and uh, <laughs> musty <laughs> dark souls is so interesting is interesting though if you dive into it but 
I just don't like the fact that oh, if it's not shooting, it has to be some sort of medieval. Mm. Oh like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like the the mud and it's just like yeah, everybody's yeah. all bloody and see stuff. that's my that's why I, that's why Destiny is such a ah <laughs> well, that's why it haunts Here me. Go. Like artistically, it me so. the design is so cool in that Andrew's game. Andrew's like lying in bed, going. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, ah, like bungee. when I was a when I was a kid, I used to draw like fake screenshots of a first person shooter, and it was always like um, you'd be in this pretty open, unique environment, and I think that's why I liked Metroid Prime so much because it's mm. basically like yeah, yeah. No, it's like I I the game <clears throat> has to like more and more. Maybe this is just like my taste have changed as I gotten older. But if something doesn't delight me, then I don't really want to have anything to do with it, yeah. like movies or whatever. Like, if I'm not, like, delighted to play it, I'm like, oh, I just love everything about this. And it's just, like, <laughs> something, something's really good about it. Yeah. Then I, I'm just not that interested in it. Yeah, totally. Which, like, Zelda is hitting all those points for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, uh, I don't know, some other game. <laughs> <laughs> I posted on Facebook, but there's that one shot in the trailer where there's this yes, massive yeah, 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 bridge. Yeah. And then just, yeah. like, he's running up it. I'm like, that is, like, my yeah, spirit that stuck animal out to me. right there. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's Zelda I yearn for. I never I, yearned, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> you just sat and yearned. I craved. I crave often. I crave often. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good line. I crave often. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like Studio Ghibli, man. It's like, and now that they're... Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, you know they got a TV show. Thomas just showed us that trailer the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like on coming on to Amazon. It looks good. Yeah. It's like CG, but still looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So switch. <laughs> yeah. So back on the topic of switch. <laughs> well, you know what's another crazy thing is it's coming out in less than two months. Oh man, yeah. that's so fantastic. March third. That that was another big month thing. and yeah. a half. Because people were predicting March seventeenth. Oh, yeah, yeah, based yeah, yeah, on yeah. some peripherals. That's that, fantastic, yeah. dude. March third. Also, I I love the build up to the Zelda release. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, yeah I don't know what it is. You're sitting there going like. Well, it's, it's like launch, when, it's they, when they kept building it up, we knew it was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what day is March 3rd? Is that a weekday or a weekend? It's got to be a Friday. They always do stuff on Friday now. Really? Yeah. I, I thought now. they launched stuff on like Tuesdays sometimes. Tuesdays is like the industry standard, but oh. Nintendo they, always they does always Fridays. Switch to fri- they switched Good. to Fridays. Good for now, that, yeah. man. Friday yeah, makes more sense. We always were like, why don't they do Fridays? You pick it yeah, up. Yeah, pick it up. You play it for the weekend. Oh, and you're right. Because, okay, so March 10th, some people were thinking that because it spells Mario, which is the next Friday. Oh, that would have been cool, too, yeah. They could have done Mario oh, Day. That yeah. is, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, one thing I'm just glad about remember. is yeah. that we were able to do online pre-orders. Because when the Wii came out, I went to Target at 2 a.m. Mm. and was out there in the <laughs> November weather like until whenever they opened, 8 or whatever. And it was horrible. <laughs> and the next day was pretty horrible, too. But now I'm just like, I'll get up in the morning. It'll just either be at the store or <laughs> I can't remember what I did in store pickup or shipping. But either oh, way. Right. Because you could go to the midnight release, but you don't have to now, and you'll still be guaranteed one, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we what, did we pre-order Wii U or Wii? No, we didn't get one on launch. Remember? Or no, I mean Wii. Sorry, yeah. You no, guys went to Walmart. I went to Walmart, but you, my experience you had, was way yeah. better <laughs> because oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they were they had their Wiis at layaway, so everyone was inside, and the line just happened to go right by the cushion aisle. <laughs> <laughs> so we were all sitting on cushions playing our DSs, playing Mario Kart. We would everyone would walk over to the subway and get sandwiches. That's Man, funny. that's that's a great experience. Like us, it was great. We were like we would take turns going back to our car and turning on our engines and just sitting in the heater. So like, can you hold the spot in line for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then go there every ten minutes and then come back. Oh, so you can go to your car. <laughs> I, I do. Okay, this is really off topic now, I guess. But um, I've always noticed that when I was in line for any like Nintendo product. And this isn't a shot at like, you know, Xbox or PlayStation fans, but they're always. It feels like they're always more personable, or at least they're more willing, more willing to you know, talk with you or something. Because yeah, yeah. whenever I'm whenever I'm in line for an Xbox game, you know, whatever the Halo is, it's like you're standing outside GameStop, you're just kind of <laughs> looking at people. Some guys over there smoking, making a ruckus, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, I just want to get my game and go home. I feel like you have to have like a I whimsical. Don't have anything to do with these people. <laughs> you have to have like a whimsical childishness to like, like to wait Nintendo. in line for a Nintendo. And whereas product Xbox or... is just like, like bald space marine boot camp. <laughs> it's just so weird. <laughs> just kidding. Because I had been in lines for Xbox games because those are usually the only mm-hmm. games you are wait in line for midnight yeah. release. But not Nintendo <clears throat> games, because for some reason they don't do midnight releases. Anyways, I'd always been in line for Xbox games, and that had been my experience. And then the Wii came out, and I was in line, and these people were so great. They were playing DSs, and they were like, oh, you want to play Mario Kart? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I didn't have my DS because I remember I was driving Andrew to like something. And I was like, the Wii's coming out. I better go check Walmart. So I drove him, came back, stopped by Walmart and saw that there's a line. And I was like second to last to getting oh, to get, to get the Wii. Oh, you got there just in time. So I got in line, but I didn't have my DS because I didn't, you know, wasn't prepared. So I talked to the guy. I talked to the people in line like, yo, I, I can I, would you be cool like with me going home and getting my DS? I'm like, yeah, sure. Wow, I drove home, awesome. got my DS, came back and they held my spot in line. That's with me. awesome. And we all played like Mario Kart. It's just like, it that's, felt like this you know, family. Yeah. Is that Nintendo? It's kind of like that, that culture that Nintendo wants to create with their. I have a re- super regretful story that <laughs> relates to that. When I was in Japan in 2006, 2005, 2006, the, uh, the Nintendo DS Lite mm. launched in Japan. So they had the white model first, and then they released the two other colors like a week later. I missed the white one, but when the other colors came out, I was like, okay, I'm going to Big Camera, which is like the big electronics store. I'm camping out overnight. Camped out overnight, and I was so shy that I was in line. Well, it's not even shy, but just like too in your shell, you know? The dude behind me, he clearly wanted to make friends, mm-hmm. and he gave me a piece of gum, and I was like, oh, thanks. And then I just ate the gum and I wanted to talk to him the whole time, but I was too like embarrassed or too shy to talk to him. So like he had his Mario Kart uh, DS manual. He didn't even have a DS yet. He was looking through the strategy guide oh, and I had it on my DS and I could have like, that was like such a perfect opener. I'd be like, hey, you want to play it before you get the, the real DS Lite? Uh. And just like, that's like, to this day, I regret that. I wish I could go back to that dude and I was like, thank you for making the first effort. <laughs> For that piece of gum, that was, <laughs> I, I let you down. Uh, let me offer you a piece of gum in yeah. friendship. <laughs> Sharing the joy. Yeah, yeah, but that was another midnight launch. That was one of two times where I did the overnight. That was, the Wii was the other one. Where mm-hmm. I actually waited from like midnight until the morning. I remember the midnight launch for GameCube. And we were standing in line. And this, I don't remember that. I do. It was at Meijer. And... Um, Oh, I, I, I did Meyer too, but yeah. it was no, I did the Indianapolis Meyer. But um, we were standing in line, and this one guy he goes up. He's like, "Yeah, I want a black GameCube," and she's, like, "Oh, we're out of the black ones." So like, this is ridiculous. Like I waited in line, blah blah, and it's like. I'm so glad that I don't care about that yeah. stuff. <laughs> like, I got the Neon. That would have been me if I didn't get my Master's Edition. Yeah, yeah. I waited all night for pre-order online. No. <laughs> I wouldn't. But. but it's like, man, the, the color of a console just does not matter. Oh, all. yeah. No, actually, it was funny, too, because at the Meyer we did, you didn't get a choice of oh, color. Really? Yeah, they just did a drawing. What was it? Was the oh, black and the purple? Did. Maybe you did. Yeah, it black was black and, and then purple. they had the spice orange or... I, that, that came later. later. That oh, came later. Okay. Uh, our Meyer had forty of them, and it was mm. a midnight launch, and so there was twenty black, twenty purple, and I actually just decided to go for the purple because I was like, black's so standard. And I was like, let's yeah. go for something weird. Yeah, unique is always the way to go. Yeah. Purple is like the classic GameCube now. No, man, it's like when people get mad about <clears throat> stuff like that. Like, I I totally get it because I've done that many many times in my life, and like, I've but it's such like a. It can be frustrating, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, but don't build it up in your head. Like, don't get to the point where you're gonna get angry about it. Don't sit there going like, "Man, if I don't get that black one, I'm gonna be so upset." Like, like, especially don't get mad at the person working at Meyer. Do you think they have any control whatsoever over the situation? Like, also, it's like, are you gonna be playing GameCube and then you look over, you're like. Purple. Uh, Should have gotten the black. <laughs> Purple. Oh my god. On a side note, um, I really found it hilarious how they're like, "Oh, we took stuff from all the past consoles," and they're like, "The GameCube had a handle." I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, poor GameCube." We tried to make it. That's portable. your legacy, the handle. <laughs> well, that's funny because they had rumored that game there were going to be GameCube virtual console games on the Switch. And oh yeah. That didn't pan out last night, but it could still pan out in the future. Oh yeah, yeah. easily. Well. Oh, well, I was gonna say, didn't they have it on the Wii U? But no, they didn't. No, they didn't. I was thinking yeah. of Nintendo sixty four. Although you can or hack Wii. your Wii U did they, to play GameCube. Did games, they have Nintendo yeah. sixty four on Wii? Virtual console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I bought yeah. Super Mario sixty four on launch That's day. That's right. Actually. Okay, I got oh. uh, Paper Mario. That's cool. Yeah. Man, isn't it amazing the Wii wasn't even HD? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. We have to get composite cables. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks good on a CRT TV, especially with component cables. Mm. But man, you put that on an HD TV today, it's like. I remember mm-hmm. playing Twilight Princess on an HD TV. Yeah, it was so was blurry. Like, God, it was terrible. Yeah. And have they you didn't have the, the HD version with the normal one. No, They're literally, they literally added new textures because some of the stuff in the old one was so blurry. Yeah, like, yeah. There was nothing there. Hmm. 
man it's like god those dark <laughs> those transition days from crts or sd tvs to hd tvs those some those rough man they're like we look terrible mm-hmm. what a horrible yeah. looking system yeah <laughs> unless you unless you emulate it and then like upscale it and all that yeah, stuff yeah. yeah that requires man. too much effort <laughs> well <laughs> man they i want a metroid <laughs> there, was a, a metroid there was a quote and i'm not gonna say i'm gonna say take it with a grain of salt but reggie was like oh come back and ask us in a little bit about you know metroid or whatever mm. but he, this reggie he's, man uh, he's reggie's, like, he's like, reggie's, like, reggie's the so. most <laughs> marketer but type. you have to admit <laughs> they reggie. are definitely aware he's and they robot. can't ignore it for that long they, they mm. are aware of it you know it's not like they're just sweeping it out. Are they, the though? Road. Nintendo no, has been... No, I think they can keep ignoring it because I don't think it's going to make them any money. They're like, yeah, we hear you and we understand, but not enough of you people <clears throat> buy these games, so... <laughs> Nintendo is really good at being... But that, well, <laughs> actually, you know what? They made Federation Force. Yeah. So I think yeah, they just has same. Has something... <laughs> they are. I'm telling has you. Has that ever <laughs> stopped Nintendo? Like, look at 1-2-Switch. I'm not saying it's bad, but, like, do you really expect that many to, like, that many people to get into that kind of game i actually thought that looked cool well, how much cool. is that gonna cost anyway 40. actually i don't know is okay it? i was gonna say that's 60 dollars game no, they're no. out of their minds that uh, little snip game is actually only 20 <laughs> yeah, bucks yeah. so that looks which awesome. that's actually it doesn't Holy use any cow, that looks so much but, yeah, that's a four-player great. game too oh really? really yeah do you know how much fun that's gonna be we sitting are, around with four people one of us is getting that and we're... so <laughs> on giant bomb today they were talking about uh their experience at the like event in new york mm-hmm. and they said that the people running the kiosks they didn't actually say this outright but they were implying it that these are drinking games like he was oh. like oh maybe you would want to you know have a party that's know, a great idea drinking stuff the one two switch thing <laughs> just like any of those games but like doing like that snippet game or whatever mm-hmm. with the drinking game, dude no awesome. that's that is one thing it's or like the milking <laughs> that's another example of how many possibilities there are you don't even need the screen to play stuff yeah like yeah eight joy cons on one console yeah one two switch doesn't even need the screen it's just all think sound. about yeah. all the possibilities mm-hmm. Oh, so man, cool. it's like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not even thinking of like grand possibilities. I just want Ninja Turtles for the Super Nintendo on the Switch, <laughs> and then being able to play that anywhere. Mm-hmm. Was, I would love that. I'd, I'd go up to random strangers like, "Hey, you bored? Gonna play Ninja Turtles?" <laughs> <laughs> you just pull out a Switch from your yeah. backpack. Hey, and you're like, let's play some. Ninja waiting Turtles. for uh, midnight launches no, is gonna be great now. <laughs> I swear, dude. Every time I fly, like the person next to me, they're playing oh, with yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Like unless they really don't want to play, I'm like. Would you like to play? <laughs> we would like to play. <laughs> would you like to share in my joy? <laughs> what if, like, we were on a plane, like, on either, like, you know, the four row things in the planes? Like, I'm on one end, you're on the other end. Yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> just force the middle if we were people. all on a plane and we all brought our switches, I would say we should try and get, like, a like a big raucous party oh, going. Oh, dude, that'd be awesome. awesome. Yeah. Like, if they, you, oh, my God. The only God. problem is you can't use gyro stuff. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no, dude. So, if they make a test. Tetris game. Do you oh. realize that if like if there was three people, that'd be six player Tetris on a plane. Yeah. Oh that god. would be nuts, man. That would be so much. Do you fun. remember how much fun we had with the DS Tetris? Oh Tetris my god, dude. We just talked about <laughs> Oh man. It's a good time. Oh my god, that'd be so much yeah, fun. That, man. No, that is one thing that I admire Nintendo is like they really emphasize the joy of like real life in a weird way yeah like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like remember they talked they released the wii u and they talked about the book alone together <laughs> like what other <laughs> yeah. company would care about it? that's so like, true they when they released the wii u they were talking about how like they want people to come together and play and they're like talking about this book called alone together how everyone's like getting isolated and like, yeah everybody's sitting in a room but they're all playing on their phones <clears throat> mm-hmm. that's what the yeah thesis but it's of like the book uh is. for for a while i had a theory that nintendo wanted people to not play games and just live real life. Yeah. Like, they kept making these horrendous decisions. <laughs> yeah. They're just trying to get people to go outside. Like, oh, yeah. we fit, you know, just get yeah, exercise. Yeah. And, yeah. It, it is Pokemon really true, go. though. Like, with every, every time I get together with people and we play Nintendo games, it's always you're sitting around one TV and you're having a lot of fun. Like, the last time we had Scambri and them over, we were all sitting in front of our own TVs playing our PlayStation 4s together, but we were all like, you know, zoned in our own yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. But that's never when we never happens when we play Nintendo games. We're always like, let's play some Smash Bros. Well, then, yeah, it's very much more communal. Like, just mm-hmm. Smash Brothers is a perfect example. Like, yeah. we're all looking at the same thing. It's more like... Yeah, yeah. It's more know, direct. And playing a Super Mario 3D World. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. those games, you always have fun playing that because or, you get to be with the people. 
Yeah, or even like Mario Maker. Like mm-hmm. you made a level and I was playing it. It was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you could see where I'm making mistakes and stuff. No, that's the thing. Those mini games, people were making fun of them. Like there's one where you try to count how many balls are in there based on yeah, the yeah. rumble. Think of imagine like oh, you got one? one. Yeah. Oh. I thought it was ice cubes. Well, it's anything. Just kidding. Kidding. <laughs> that was so yeah. random. And they're like, no. When like, they said that, I was like, we're like oh, you can count the ice cubes. I was like, what? We we're like, like what only ice cubes about? though. Like nothing else. Like it can only simulate an ice cube. And he's like, oh, pour water. And I'm like, what is going on? Um, but no, just imagine you got one switch in the middle, eight people sitting around, each with their own Joy-Con. It's that a party, be man. So yeah. awesome. You Some know beers. what Nintendo is? Like, I was watching the Treehouse live stream today. You know what it is? It's for people who have gotten past trying to be cool. Exactly. Yeah. Like, when you're really young, you don't care at all. You can be wearing, like, a diaper walking around. Like, <laughs> my, my ne- nephew, right? Like, mm-hmm. he just walks around pointing at stuff wearing a diaper. He doesn't care. Then you get to, like, a certain age, and you're like, oh, I got to be cool, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. And then, like, you go through this really awkward period. Then you hit a certain age, and you realize, oh, I don't need to be cool at all. If, yeah. if, if you had a family of consoles, Nintendo would be either the child or the grandparent. Yeah, yeah, Xbox yeah. would be, like, the angsty teenager, and yeah. PS4 would be, like, the 20s, 30s guy. 20s. Exactly. <laughs> it's perfectly put. But it's like, um, it's for people who have realized that, like, oh, I can just, you know, why don't we just have fun? Let's put the stupid Wiimote on our head and then <laughs> waggle our butt or whatever we're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, that's so true, man. It's it's just, you just, at some point you're just like, man, I just want to play games, have fun, and not care yeah, at yeah. all. You know, and that's like what Nintendo is. I think like, I've told you guys that story before about the Mario posters in my room. Have I told you that story? Mm-mm, I don't think so. So I had these Mario posters in my room, and then one time I was doing a video for this guy, and he's just like, God, I hate this guy so much, but the, <laughs> I mean, I don't hate him, but <laughs> he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't, I don't even know him. I haven't seen him in years oh. now and I wasn't even really friends with him. Anyway, <laughs> came to my house to like, I was oh. going to give him the video and I knew that he was going to make a comment about the posters and he came into my room and then made comment, made fun of me and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was embarrassed about it, but like, man, if that happened now, I'd just be like, Yo, I don't have time for you, man. Uh, here, here's your video. You may leave my house. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think about you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't no, think about you at all. Who, yeah, who would, like, what kind of person does that? Like, why yeah, would you come into somebody of else's some, home yeah. and make fun of them? It's like, of their hobbies and things like it's that. It's funny how, like, it, it's just like. S- you can tell they're just oozing with insecurity. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Really like, oh, God, yeah, Mario yeah. posters. <laughs> oh, Mario. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, yeah, that, that, oh, man. That makes me angry hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel, he's like, I can feel my my sexuality changing looking at those Mario posters. He what am I going to do? No, no. Oh, okay. I, I'm just making fun of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's like, uh. It's like that one Lonely Island song, the not gay one. Not gay. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 not gay. <laughs> like, have to reassure uh, yourself of something that doesn't even yeah. matter. <laughs> that goes back to the whole like um, stigma of playing a video game in public. Yeah. Like, who cares? I, I don't man? think it's there anymore, right? Like, I, mm. probably not as much. Yeah, um, I haven't thought about it myself, and but I mean maybe it's just I change. I don't know if the whole society changed. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean I used to think about it all the time. I was like, Ugh. I mean it's well, <laughs> if it is there, it's kind of ridiculous because everyone's on their freaking phone all the yeah. time playing. Yeah. I think that's the main thing that like emboldened yeah. me. I was like, you're on your phone. It's like, I'm <laughs> it's like, why would I play this crappy phone game when I could be playing you know this full game on my 3ds? Yeah. I'll just play that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Who cares? No, it doesn't matter at all. Exactly. Like what a waste of now time. Now I'm gonna be like. <laughs> Zelda, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> you know, it's like, as I've gotten older, like, th- thank God for this, but so many things I've realized that I've wor- that I've worried about before, now I'm just like, how did I ever have any time for that? Like, now when I worry about it, I'm like, I have other things to do. There's no time to worry about that. And then, like, if people, this is a perfect example. One time I was playing basketball, and then I was just waiting for the ball to come, and I started dancing to myself. And then a kid, he was like maybe ten or twelve or something, like in that awkward <laughs> age, and he asked me, "Are you dancing?" I go, "Yes." Like, why are you even asking me that question? You can see what I'm doing. But I didn't say that to him. I just said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> but, <laughs> but in my head, that's what I was thinking. But it's, I understand where he was coming from. But it's like, man, worrying about stuff like that—what a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, um, oh god, we're really getting off topic yeah. now, but I guess that's kind of the natural progression. Um, but whenever you see those videos like uh, Mega64 or stuff like that, when they do yeah. 
those silly videos like in public. Yeah. I actually I actually have a great respect for yeah. those kind of people who can completely not care what people are thinking. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. People may look at them and think like, man, those people are crazy. Like, yeah. What are they doing? Like, oh, we're, we're filming a video. But even like, even like I wouldn't be able to go out there and do some of the yeah, yeah. stuff that they do because I'd feel so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But to be able to let go of all those inhibitions. Well, that and it's just... like, it disrupts daily life, which is kind of a beautiful <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing. Because yeah, yeah. like people are stuck in their routines and suddenly this fat naked dude yeah. runs through. Yeah. Like... <laughs> what, always, what always upsets me is when, I, when you see those kind of videos and then somebody is like, you know, like chastising them. No, yeah. And you're just like, what see, is it to those you, are, man? Those are my really favorite like moments, though. Because inhibiting your, your, like, your pursuit of happiness or I something. Just, yeah. <laughs> I love how they stick it to him, though. There, there was one where this guy's like riding a bike through like a baseball practice or something. And the, <laughs> the coach comes over and what are you doing? And like, they, they still got the camera on. Oh, you know, we're just filming rocks for a school project. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, I would just, you know, like, I would just laugh and take it in all good, good humor and yeah, just move yeah. on with your life. Sense of humor, that's what people need. Yeah. Like, as, long as, it's, as long as you're not, like, directly <clears throat> interfering with another human being, like, you know, yeah. like, Doing yeah, maybe riding it. across the bicycle, bicycle across the baseball. Well, if it actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. At a certain point, I'm sure you can be like, okay, can you please get off the baseball? Yeah, yeah. But like once or twice, it's like, okay, yes, funny, great, good job, you got your video. You can go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. It was, uh... but yeah. No, so, someone put it, uh, like, I was listening to another podcast where they were talking about how sometimes com comedians like they use humor to like deal with really dark situations and he was like you know it's like sometimes there's just no other way to react to the absurdity of life like absurdity mm. is funny and life is kind of absurd yeah no yeah <laughs> so that's like, true just yeah. don't take it so seriously <laughs> yeah i think that's like um a, <laughs> i think that's a very important um thing to know when you if you just want to be happy and enjoy life like don't take it so seriously yeah no. Well, I mean, it's like it's what we all aspire to, right? But then you get caught into the daily grind, and then yeah. like you're stuck in traffic, and then you want to kill somebody. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then when Mega Sixty Four dude comes up, you're like, perfect outlet, right? Here. Yeah. I'm gonna blast yeah, yeah. this dude. Or so. like, I always avoid the like yesterday when we were watching the Switch presentation, Andrew was like browsing NeoGAF at the same time. I'm like, man, don't don't read the threads, dude. You're just <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 <laughs> it was funny too because like I'll do that for the Final Fantasy 15 spoiler thread. Like I want to go there and like read about like oh story theories yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But then it's just so many posts of people like oh what a disappointment oh blah blah blah. And then I mean there's just as many posts of people like saying that they loved it. But it's like sometimes I just feel like. Uh, internet culture is just uh, finding things to be outraged about mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's like the, the number one pastime on the internet mm -hmm. it's like i'm outraged about this it's because <laughs> like uh people have a soapbox suddenly yeah you know? uh, well when breath of the wild comes out i am not going to read any threads on impressions because i know it's going to be the zelda cycle all over again people oh, are gonna be like yeah. i cannot imagine oh, so I, like, like yeah that'd be really weird yeah the, the game's gonna be fantastic and amazing <clears> and people are still gonna find things to nitpick about and it's just like Man, can't so you, you, can't, you just can't enjoy things in life, can't you? No, some people don't want to be happy. Yeah. It's like that one quote from... Zizek? No, Anthony DeMello. He's like, people don't want to be happy. They want other things. <laughs> they want to be recognized. They want to be, like, mm. number one. They just want all this. They want to be yeah. right, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So... The Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've discussed just about their, all there no, is No, see, that's discuss. why I got the neon Joy-Cons, because that's, yeah. that's my philosophy no, of life. So, I like the colors yeah. a lot. Yeah. And yeah. on the tr uh, stream today, they were saying that uh, it's like the brightest physical object he had ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never lose them. They're yeah. no, they like awesome. playing in the center. Like, ah. Yeah, I actually still want to get the neon one. I'm have to look into how I can get the Neo. I don't so think Amazon's pre yeah. So I have four pre <laughs> I have four pre-orders outstanding right now. Because I don't trust these people. Mm. Like the especially like I trust Amazon. I have an Amazon pre-order locked in now. I'm I, I'm probably just gonna go with that one. But all the other ones like man, Best Buy, Walmart, mm. Target. Actually I kind of trust Best Buy. I've pre-ordered stuff that Yeah I've never had issues okay, good. with them because but like uh Target and Walmart man I don't trust them man. Yeah no. Walmart I would definitely not trust. Like, in fact, Walmart, I pre-ordered uh, the Bravely Second Collector's Edition. They yeah. shipped it in, like, this big bubble mailer that's just loose. 
that like by the time I opened it up, it's just like smashed to pieces. Oh, yeah. And I was just was. like, as soon as like the in store pickup, the lady brought it out. I was like, I was looking at it, it was in the bubble mirror. I was like, oh god, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna cancel those. Wait, what yeah. is a bubble mailer? Just the just like the you know padded envelope. envelope. Oh, but it was like yeah. way bigger than it should have been, so the yeah, thing yeah, was like yeah. sloshing around in there. <laughs> <laughs> sloshing around. <laughs> like, taking a pot of liquid form. <laughs> <laughs> you never know a book could slosh around. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm gonna probably go with the Amazon pre writer. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the best buy, I don't know. I just wanna have those safety nets. <laughs> I could always cancel later, it's no problem. But speaking of which, we forgot to talk about this. The Zelda Breath of the Wild Master Edition. Mm. It's got like soundtrack CD carrying case and a sword. Well, yeah, that little display. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like it's probably like this tall actually. Yeah, but it's like a display of just the master sword, which that is. And then, uh, so today I shouldn't admit this on video, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> so I have a Twitter notification that from this dude Wario sixty four <laughs> who will just post deals as soon as they go live. I'm driving and I have this notification on, so the the notification comes up and it, no, notifications have been coming up the whole time I was driving here. <laughs> and I look at it and it said, Zelda Master Edition up at Best Buy. It was all caps. Yeah. And, and we I should would... <laughs> preface this by saying, Amazon, Best Buy, and um, GameStop. GameStop were the only ones who would have pre-orders for this. Amazon and GameStop oh. had already sold out. They'd sold out in like in the middle of the night. So I saw that, and I almost swerved off the road. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> now would be a good time to insert that clip. <laughs> but I, I was trying to turn off an exit and just like enter my information, but I was like, there's no exit. There was the next exit was like a mile away. I was like, I got to do it right now or it's too late. <laughs> so I started entering my information. I'm like desperately typing it into the Best Buy website as I'm doing it. And then I switched over to Messenger, and I... I did a voice to the text and I said, Zelda Master Edition, go, 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 go. <laughs> and I, I was on a PC and I couldn't get it in time. Yeah, wow. I, was, I was just lucky, I guess. But I, I had my account already set up, ready yeah, to go. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's what got me with the Walmart pre order. But <laughs> oh, screw Walmart, man. I'm we were like all ready to pre order. And then it was like, your password is out of date. And I was like, no. <laughs> Actually, the Walmart pre order went back up later. But uh, oh. anyways, you Whatever. guys got your. But yeah, I was driving while I was doing that, but I survived. And nobody <laughs> well, got I didn't hurt. even realize until until Andrew was like, "Oh, Robbie's gonna be here soon," and I was like, "Wait!" And I was like, counting out. Did he do that while he was driving? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is so funny. In fact, this I I reached an exit, but it was right as I finished the thing. <laughs> so I took the exit off, and then I, it said, "Thank you, your orders were placed." I was like, "Dang it! I shouldn't have even taken the exit." <laughs> Turn around. I don't, uh, but yeah, that looks awesome, and I'm really glad we were able to secure a copy. Mm-hmm. And yes. the I love collector's editions, man. I was like, we'll be playing it. Yeah, like that's crazy, so dude. Sick. You know what's funny is like I kind of judge or I kind of measure my life for the next big like <laughs> either game or movie release. <laughs> I'm like, man, if I can just make it, if I can survive to Force Awakens, I'll be happy. And then I was like, if I can survive to Final Fantasy 15, I'll be happy. <laughs> and now it's like Breath of the Wild. I was like, man, I gotta make sure I don't get hit by a car or anything. <laughs> oh, man. Which I guess is good is that I can get that excited about a game or something. <laughs> Zelda is the only game series right now that oh. really gets me excited. We should talk about how wrong a post is. <laughs> I saw a post where it was like, a picture of Zelda. is like, Nintendo fans, oh, this is the best thing ever. Uh, and then it's like, if it was Zelda with like a mustache, or Link with a mustache or something, uh-huh. the same picture. It's like, third party game, Nintendo fans, oh, this is nothing. Uh-huh. But that's wrong. Like, Zelda's, like, yes, I get it because other games have done open world stuff with voice acting and story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a certain polish and a certain, like, oh, charm. Yeah, yeah. There's a certain and, charm that Zelda yeah, games yeah, yeah. have. Yeah. Like, all Nintendo games Like, have. I love Witcher 3, but it's like, Zelda is just magic. Like, it's got yeah. magic. <laughs> yeah. No, like, Witcher 3, the open world environment very much speaks to me and, like, the, the structure. <clears throat> Here's the design, man. It's like, I cannot play as some white haired old dude yeah, while yeah. walking around in medieval dragon land. Yeah. Like, it just does I, not interest me. When I first started playing Witcher 3, I want a pretty Japanese boy dragon land <laughs> <laughs> in tights and a green tunic. <laughs> but I remember that when I first started playing Witcher 3, and it was the first Witcher I had ever played. When, um, when, I can't even remember his name. Geralt. Geralt, yeah. When he first started talking, I was like, are you serious? Yeah. Could this I be I don't know him? what his voice sounds like. He's he like, sounds like this. I'm a witcher. <laughs> he just changes <laughs> like, the whole game. Like, he goes, he goes mm. 
the monster's bleeding. <laughs> He's gone that way. <laughs> and, and I was just sitting there going, like, could this be a more generic character? <laughs> like a like ripped, like super handsome. Like he's got scars and he talks like no, this. No, it's like whole uh, game. like comparing a Studio Ghibli movie with like Lord of the Rings, but even less magical. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's something like. Well, I mean, Lord of the Rings like that has its ardent fans. I can yeah, I can see its, what they I mean, like. They about have it. a certain <clears throat> yeah. I think it's just when it became movies, it became a little more generic. Yeah, it's, no, a it's like a Marvel movie yeah. for me. Marvel movies just like. Well, I guess you can't call Lord of the Rings Fana. generic because that's kind of what set the standard for everything. That's true. Medieval. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe, like even maybe Zelda it's because it's such a standard, yeah. it seems generic because of right, everything right. else. Mm-hmm. But but the point is, it's like uh, I don't know. I can't think of another medieval setting movie, but like, it's like Spartacus or some <laughs> some no no name I, movie. I will versus say Studio this though. I wish I could like everything. Yeah. Have you ever oh, thought yeah, about that? Yeah, like, definitely, man. So, like, I would love to be able to like Get every single game about again. everything. Yeah, but <laughs> just like, there's, isn't it weird how you just have very specific tastes mm-hmm. and you're just Although, like, you know, it is kind of nice not to get excited about certain things. That's true, too. Because yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. oh, because I'm now easy I to... have money and I don't have to. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. But you I guess it, it's, it's, it's what makes us people. It's, yeah, I suppose that's true. Taste. No, yeah. I don't, I'm very happy when yeah. other people and get enjoyment out of that type yeah, of yeah. stuff. I think that's just the only th- time that it really upsets me is like when people are just being exploited for money, like. Uh, mm any of these phone games with in-app purchases and they just like exploit people and like get them addicted to nothing or and destiny just to get their money yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can't explain this <laughs> you, know, you know what really bothers me and i'm not saying i'm not guilty of this none of us are guilty of that or none of this are innocent blameless innocent no. yeah um is when i rag on a game that someone else likes uh-huh not not to make them feel bad but just because i want like destiny you know there are prob- there's so many people out there who probably love Destiny to mm-hmm. death. But me and Andrew are constantly bagging on that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we feel like we have good reason. And I will tell you right now, I think we do have good reason. Yeah, no, we but do. <laughs> where do. Where do I, you know, like, what? where do I get off on saying that Destiny is a bad game yeah, and that it should yeah. be better and whatnot? This goes back like, to the whole food hipster it, thing. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I yeah. yeah, I shouldn't have to say that at all. You know, like, I shouldn't. There should be no reason in my mind for me to have to go around saying Destiny's a bad game. Yeah, it's just like what I was saying on the vlog. Like, we all do it, but, like, what we should be doing is just, like, not even thinking about the stuff we don't like. Like, like whenever people rag on on Nintendo or, or like, a Zelda game Mm -hmm. or whatever, I'm just like, man... I love this game, and you just can't see what's good about it. No, that's it, but the, I thing. Do the yeah, exact yeah, same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, we've done that a bunch in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh man, this sucks. This sucks, but this is good. <laughs> but, I mean, why can't I... everyone agree with me? <laughs> <laughs> so why can't we all just get along and be happy? And I think enjoy that's the like, fun? you know, that's this kind of a little bit more tangential, but we're all hypocrites all the time about something Mm -hmm. and like it's impossible to escape that you might as well be (laughs) self-aware yeah (laughs) Yeah. it's like as long as you can admit it (laughs) you know it helps yeah it goes a long way you know what's funny is i'm thinking about the switch and like obviously zelda i'm super hyped about but now i'm thinking about those mini games like one two switch actually sounds really fun to me oh man it'd be awesome the idea of having a crowd of of the mini games i mean i know about the cow milking one because he mentioned it like five times and yeah, the, the ping pong one. one, they got a ping oh, pong one. It's just by sound. The shooting one is oh, like. Um, one thing we didn't talk about was that uh, that punching game. Oh, oh arms, yeah. arms, yeah, arms. Yeah, like I, I think it looks intriguing. Yeah, no, the, it's cool that you hold it like sideways. Yeah, it apparently mm-hmm. has traditional controls too. Mm. Oh, but what's interesting I thought was that they kind of got around the, you know how motion controls they need to be one-to-one to feel really good mm-hmm. they got around that a little bit the by doing arms. the extending mm-hmm. arms mm-hmm. so it's like there's a reason for there to be a delay when yeah. you punch and That's you can kind of like control them afterwards yeah i thought that was I, smart i think it looks fun but i think the game has no staying power at all yeah i'm not interested it's more <laughs> of an experimental kind of thing it's like yeah. we boxing Wii yeah boxing that was, was really part cool of another game yeah. 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 yeah like maybe if they had just made it as a sort of tech demo. Yeah. That would have yeah. been great. You know what would be cool and will never happen is if Skyrim had motion controls. <laughs> like, oh, that'd yeah. Be fun. That'd yeah. be really cool. That'd be great. How old is Skyrim now? <laughs> Five years old? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's older than that. I was mentioning this to Andrew. They have milked Skyrim for all it is worth. I yeah. got close to beating it on 360. I never did. I don't know. I mean, it's a great game, but it's Can you not really that ever great. beat Skyrim? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean know. the main story. Right? I have. I beat the main it. story. The main story is actually really short. I think Witcher Three is better than Skyrim in every way conceivable. So I can see that yeah. from what I've seen of you guys play it. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, I'm not, not going to. I'm not going to say anything because I just talked about bad mouthing other games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a great game. It's Final Fantasy 15. If we're talking about open oh, world you know, games, oh, Thomas I need to got try it for Christmas, it, and he brought it over, and we just did the tutorial. But I really want to pick it up and try it out because oh my god, it's I so never weird, got to play that demo. Like you know the um, platinum demo. Yeah. And episode disc. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the combat feels really fun. And oh my so god, like, it's so good, dude. It, it's, it's much fantastic. more satisfying than I expected it would be. <clears throat> yeah. I. It's surprising how much I like it because like I had very high expectations for it <laughs> and like it met those expectations. So. What about uh, the Last Guardian? <laughs> oh, that's a funny story. So. I would have already played that game to death, but Final I've heard that 15. the frame rate is much better on the PlayStation 4 Pro, and I was actually playing it on the PlayStation 4, the regular version, and I started to get motion sick because oh. there's so much, the frame rate's so bad and there's input lag. Really? So just, I was like feeling really sick after like an hour, and I was like, I gotta stop playing, so I haven't played it since then. Man, that game has had so many hurdles to come over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that it's released, it's still got like it's still got a oh, hurdle. Man. Like I need a more powerful system. See, to play that's it. so that's what's concerning about the Switch frame rate stuff. It's like yeah, yeah. People, people well, I think um, it'll be gonna be it's gonna be fine because like Mario Kart sixty four or not mm. Mario Kart eight was running fantastically, <clears throat> sixty frames per second, true. even split screen. So if they can do that level of graphical fidelity with sixty frames, yeah, yeah but I think also, we can always count on Nintendo. If they're producing a first-party game, to yeah, at least yeah, yeah. create a, to, to their game will always have a certain. That is bar one thing. That I, to Nintendo yeah, yeah. makes it's the, the third most polished about. games I've ever played. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, before, I ever played like other. Like I used to be. We only had Nintendo systems for the yeah. longest time. Yeah. I didn't know other games could be so unpolished. Yeah, you didn't know like, about <laughs> jank until you played right. other games. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's so standard now. <laughs> well, even like before the 32-bit era, so before PlayStation and Saturn. Like, the jank wasn't really that much of a thing in games. Like, games, even if they were bad, they were still pretty solid. And, like, they weren't just, like, janky, you yeah. know? Yeah. But now it's, like, it's plenty It's, like, it just, it's a given that, like, playing an open world game, you're going to, like, have all this weird uh, yeah. stuff happen. But I'm, like, so forgiving of that because, like, just, like, when I give, like, the most cursory thought to how much time and effort goes oh, into yeah, an open yeah. world game, mm -hmm. I'm just, like... God, that must be. I mean, it, yeah. it doesn't really bother me. It's yeah. just interesting. Yeah, no, yeah. And but it is yeah. nice to go back to Nintendo and have polished. Yeah, well, that's interesting because I wonder if Breath of the Wild would be as polished as a because Nintendo it is. game, even yeah. though it's open world. Well, it's not only open world, but all the surfaces are climbable. So yeah, like, that's yeah, that's crazy. I don't know. When Jess, my friend Jess, saw it, he was just saying how like complex that is to program. Yeah, I can't even imagine, dude. Hmm. I'm sure it will be. But. <laughs> I'm ready so to play I'm not that a game. programmer. <laughs> oh, you look good. Well, I'm getting really hungry. I am very hungry. So, shall we end this? Let's switch it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching, listening. Uh, that other camera's probably died by now. So. <laughs> that one probably has too. Okay. <laughs> See you later. This is the black screen of our voices now.